Hello students, this is uh, um, the unit BET 2201, Instructional Methods, and your lecturer for today is Jackson Mobisa Mogeni, and our topic today is classroom management. Now, as teachers, when we go to class, it is expected that we should have uh, good management skills as we interact with our students and that we should be able to manage the class and be able to deliver the content that we are supposed to deliver without disruptions. Therefore, it is important that as teachers we develop skills and we also master the skills that are needed in order to become good and effective classroom managers. However, before we talk about the skills, that are expected of a teacher to have in order to manage the class properly. Let us start by first defining what classroom management means. And before we define what classroom management means, let us first look at what the objectives, the specific learning outcomes or the objectives that we expect to achieve by learning about this topic of classroom management. One is that by the end of this presentation, as teachers, we are, we are supposed to be able to comprehensively define what classroom management is. Secondly, we are expected to explain clearly the rationale for classroom management skills. Thirdly, we are expected to describe different classroom management skills expected of a good classroom teacher. And fourthly, we are expected to apply the different classroom management skills in our day-to-day -day classroom interactions with the learner. Therefore, let us now define what classroom management means. Classroom management has been defined variously, and I'm going to give you three definitions for now of what classroom management skill of what classroom management is now the first definition is that it is a term that teachers use to describe the process of ensuring that the classroom lessons run smoothly without dis dis disruptive behavior from students uh, compromising the delivery of instruction when learners are disruptive in a learning process, they usually compromise, they usually lower the classroom interaction activities, and therefore the teacher is not able to interact with them properly. Secondly, it is also, it, it is also used to imply the, prevent, the prevention of disrupt, disruptive behavior uh, that uh, are pre preemptive as well as uh, effectively as well as, effect, as, as well as effectively re re responding to it after it happens. In other words, what are those activities and what are those preparations that a teacher makes so that he or she can be able to prevent, uh, dis uh, to prevent disruptive behavior and how does he or she react and manage if there occurs such kind of behavior in a classroom. Then uh, the third definition is also the actions and direc directions that the teacher uh, uses to create a successful learning environment resulting in having a positive impact on students uh, on students learning uh, environment result uh, sorry on 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 students achieving given learning requirements and goals it is also the wide variety of skills and techniques that a teacher uses to keep students organized, orderly, focused, attentive, uh, attentive uh, on the task, and also academically productive during, during a class. Therefore, all those activities and behaviors that a teacher does or a teacher uh, uses to ensure that the learners are attentive, to ensure that the learners are engaged in what they are supposed to learn, then that is what is defined or is classified as classroom management and why do we need to have or to learn the skills of classroom management 
Now, when a classroom, when classroom management strategies are uh, executed effectively, when they are practiced well by the teachers, then teachers are able to, minimi to minimize behaviors that disrupt or impede uh, learning for both individual students and groups of students. Th they are able to disrupt, they are able to maintain the control of the class, and they are able to maximize the behaviors that facilitate learning in the classroom. At the same time, effective teachers tend to display strong uh, classroom management skills, while uh, the hallmark of the inexperienced or less effective teacher is a disorderly uh, classroom whereby it is filled with students who are not working or paying attention to what is being taught. And therefore, um, a good classroom manager is one who is able to maintain the attention of the students and, and make them concentrate on what they are expected to do while the teaching and learning process is going on. And at the same time, uh, a teacher does not only have to be thoroughly knowledgeable, they don't need to know the content and master the content only, but they are also supposed to uh, have management, classroom management skills. They are also, they need to know how to control a class and be able to maintain the discipline and order of that class. Therefore, let's now talk about which uh, skills does the teacher need to have in order to be able to manage and maintain a class properly. Therefore, we are going to look at various classroom management skills expected of a good classroom teacher. One of the most important skills that uh, a, a good classroom teacher is expected to have is, a, uh, is to command authority and respect from the learners. Being able to command authority and respect from the learners uh, is actually done through various ways. One of the ways of commanding authority and respect from the learners is by or through the teacher's appearance. When we talk about the teacher's appearance, we talk about how the teacher is groomed and how the teacher is dressed. Grooming deals with uh, uh, how the teacher has kept uh, uh, his or her hair, uh, uh, nails, and body appearance, and at the same time, what manner of dressing does the teacher wear? A good teacher is one that is able to groom properly and to dress properly. Learners take teachers who have groomed properly and dressed properly seriously because they look presentable and therefore they command some air of authority uh, and confidence in the learners because the learners uh, have the confidence that their teacher knows what they are talking about. So what, that is one of the major skills of uh, uh, classroom management. Another skill that is important to classroom management is uh, having uh, or modeling ideal behavior. When a teacher serves as a good role model to the, to the learners through their behavior, through their day-to-day -day conduct, then the learners uh, tend to want to imitate and, to, uh, and are attracted to such a teacher. They want to make it a habit of uh, pleasing that teacher and relating with that teacher. Therefore, a teacher who makes it a habit of demonstrating uh, good behavior that uh, the learner wants to, to see becomes an effective teacher because uh, the teacher is able to use their language properly. They are able to maintain, for example, uh, close eye contact with the learners while teaching. They are able to speak uh, uh, using, uh, um, they are able to speak using pol polite language. They are able to, re to let others speak uninterrupted and also accept their mind. And they, at the same time, they are also able to raise concerns. They are able to raise concerns uh, and ask questions and, and also air their views in a respectful manner. And therefore, when the learners see a teacher who respects them and, and, and is able to listen to them and is able to answer them in a polite manner, then they, they are able to respect that teacher and they are less likely to cause any manner of destructive behavior, destructive behavior during 
uh, the teaching and learning process. Now, the third uh, skill that a teacher is expected to have is knowledge of the subject matter. Knowledge of the subject matter. Now, apart from having knowledge of the subject matter, it is also important for the teacher also to have a wide knowledge of the other uh, subjects that they are teaching. This is because sometimes they might be required to apply knowledge from other subjects, from other disciplines, even in the subject that they are teaching. For example, if a teacher is teaching history, if a teacher is teaching history, they might be required at some point, for example, if they are teaching evolution, they might be required uh, at some point to apply some knowledge from biology about, uh, about how uh, carbon dating, for example, is done in terms of explaining the stages of evolution. Therefore, a teacher who has knowledge of the subject matter uh, is able to prepare and present the lesson well, the, is able to, to, to show that they have mastered the, 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 the subject, and then they are able even to apply and convince the learners that they know and command the subject well. Therefore, it is important that every time the teacher goes to class, they are well prepared and they understand the subject well that they are going to teach. Fourthly, in order to command uh, and have classroom management, it is good to attend to each learner's individual instructional needs. And therefore, the fourth characteristic or skill that the teacher is expected to have is individualization of instruction. Individualization of instruction therefore means that uh, the teacher understands the nature of each and every learner and they are able to tailor their teaching or their lessons according to the needs, the specific needs of their learners. A class might be composed of learners of different uh, levels of achievement. There might be learners who are high achievers, there might be learners who are slow learners, or low achievers. And when a teacher is able to blend his teaching in a way that he, he, he or she is able to cater for the needs of these different groups of learners, then it is less likely that any learner will be left behind or will feel like they are not being attended to and therefore cause any kind of disruptive, disruptive behavior. Therefore, when a learner, when each of the learners in class they are catered for, then each of the learners feel that their, their needs are, are, are met and they are, they, are, they are able to learn properly and they, they, they are less likely to cause uh, disruptive behavior or to engage in disruptive behavior during the teaching and learning process. Now, the fifth skill, the fifth skill that the teacher needs to have or, or to develop and it is a habit, a good habit for teaching and learning is punctuality and good time management, punctuality and good time management. Good teachers are usually teachers who are punctual in attending to their, to their lessons. They come to class in time and they, they, they teach throughout the lesson and leave at the end of the lesson. And therefore, the, teach, the, the, the teacher who comes to class at, in time and they teach and finish their lesson properly at the end of the lesson, then the learners are, are, are most likely uh, able to respect them and to, to be attentive to what they are saying because they are able to manage the time, their time properly and the learners realize that teachers, this kind of teachers, do not come to class ill-prepared or they don't come to class to pass time. And therefore, when the teacher comes to class punctually, the, the, and, at, and attend to the students and teach them properly, even the students will not realize how time passes during that lesson. They, they, within a short time, within a, they, they, within a short time, without them realizing, they realize that the lesson is over. And therefore, it is good uh, manners and it is good uh, etiquette as teachers to be punctual and to manage our time properly. Now, the fifth skill that a teacher also needs to have is the ability and skill to make lessons interesting and captivating. Learners are not usually um, able to learn properly when a lesson is boring. The best teachers 
make their classes and their lessons both entertaining and educative. Therefore, a good teacher is one who has some good sense of humor. These kind of teachers are able to teach about the subject well, and they are also able at the same time to make the lesson or the class entertaining while they are teaching. Then, at the same time, they are also able, through that way, to manage the class properly, to make the learners always be interested in what they are teaching, and in some cases, it even enables the learners to develop a positive attitude to, towards the subject, and at the end of the day, realize that the subject is not difficult as they thought. Now, the sixth uh, skill that the teacher is also expected to have or to develop is the ability to exercise patience when dealing with students or learner issues in class. Teachers who manage their class well are those teachers who have immense patience and are able to, to attend to and to listen to the students or learners every time that they want to be listened to. They rarely lose their temper they rarely uh, shout at the students or yell at them. They don't lose their, the control of the class at any time. And even when they are frustrated, even when they feel offended by a, a student or a section of the students, they rarely show that annoyance. They are able to maintain their cool. And at the end of the day, they are even able to regain as soon as possible and take control of the class and continue their teaching. In such a way, the learners are able to respect the teacher and are less likely to cause troubles when such a teacher is in class. A teacher who is not able to control and exercise patience, sometimes the learners tend to learn about their weakness, and when they, are, they don't want to be taught, they, they know that they need, all that they need to do is to cause disruption, to cause some kind of uh, misbehavior in, in class, and the teacher uh, becomes a noise and walks out of class. And therefore, if, for example, there, are, there is a section of the learners who don't like your subject, then they will tend to be causing such kind of trouble every other time they don't want to learn and make you get annoyed and not continue to teach. Therefore, it is important always to maintain your cool and, 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 and also to exercise control and not to yell or shout at them whenever they cause any form of disruption. Now, another skill that is also important in, uh, in, in, in proper classroom management is being able to involve learners in establishing classroom rules and guidelines. It is important that every class should have their own rules that govern how they behave and how they control themselves when they are being taught. It is not proper when a teacher imposes rules and regulations on the students. Sometimes the students might rebel and decide not to obey these rules. However, if a teacher wants rules and regulations to be followed effectively, then it is important that the teacher encourages all the students' input, all the students to make their input in terms of establishing those rules and ensuring that they accept them and are willing to follow them. Therefore, this will lead to the, the, the mutual acceptance of the rules and the students will be able and willing to respect them. Apart from that, it is also important as another skill of classroom management to document these rules. A good class is a class where those rules that govern the class are documented, they are written down, and they are placed at strategic points where the learners are able to see them. In other words, the, the teacher should print and distribute these rules or this list of rules and regulations to the, clan, to the class so that every time the learners are able to remind themselves of these rules and, and they are able to, to, to follow them. It is important that before the rules are, 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 are accepted, the teacher and the learner, the learners go through these rules and confirm that they are the rules that they, they have accepted and emphasize uh, the fact that they, all of them are supposed to respect these rules and follow them. In such a, a way, therefore, if there is 
ki some kind of misbehavior in the class and the teacher wishes to punish the student, then the students already know what kind of, of, of offense they have committed and what kind of punishment that they, are, that they should expect. And, that, and in that manner, the teacher uh, does not look like they are showing any kind of favorism to any, kind, any, any student. Another skill that the teacher is expected to, to have is the ability to address and punish bad behavior quickly. It is important for a teacher to punish any kind of misbehavior uh, as soon as possible so that that kind of punishment, that kind of uh, action will be, will be seen as being effective. A teacher who takes long to punish a student Sometimes the students feel like, like they, are not, they, are, they are being punished they are, and the punish, they are being punished for no reason and the punishment is seen as being punitive. However, when a teacher punishes the learner immediately, they, they break uh, documented rules, then the learners are able to see and, 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 and identify their mistakes and they are able to reform without much difficulty. Another uh, skill that is expected of a good teacher is avoiding punishing the whole class. It is important that when a class has uh, developed some, some kind of misbehavior, it is important that the teacher establishes which among this group of learners, this class, which among these learners have either led the rest to break these rules or they are the ones who are notorious in breaking these rules and punish the individual learners. Punish the individual learners. It is not good when a class, the whole class is punished for a group or for an individual that is as expected or supposed to take individual responsibility. This, if a class, uh, the whole class is, is punished, it might jeopardize uh, the classroom management efforts by the teacher because the class, the whole class, might decide to become rebellious. Therefore, it is important that the teacher calls out the specific student and punishes them in a manner that is friendly and that is not likely to cause any kind of uh, uh, hate, hatred or develop some kind of poor relationship with the learner or with the rest of the class. And another skill that the teacher is also expected to have is to encourage active participation during learning. It is important that during learning the teacher promotes uh, and, and injects some confidence in learning whereby the learners are given opportunities to engage in learning, to actively participate in learning and to make learn, la, la, that teaching and learning activity learner-centered. It is important that the teacher ensures that, that each of the learners in class is uh, catered for is allowed to participate in uh, the, 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 the learning activities. And that way, allowing the learners to participate develops some sense of responsibility, initiative, and confidence in these learners. Now, at the same time, another skill that the teacher is expected also to develop is to vary, to be able to vary their teaching and learning strategies. It is important that teacher employs different, various teaching and learning strategies so, so that to cater for the, the different interests and, 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 and the characteristics of the learner, and at the same time, to also uh, break monotony or avoid monotony and boredom during their teaching. A teacher who varies the teaching and learning methods and strategy uh, is able to maintain the, the, the learner attention because uh, the learners are not bored, the learners remain active, and the learners are not, are not able to predict what the teacher is, able, is going to do next. And therefore, they, they pay attention every time that the teacher is, is teaching or talking. This also helps uh, to, 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 to cater for each individual learner, cater for learner differences, uh, and also uh, uh, solve any kind of problems or difficulties that the learners might be going through. Another skill that the teacher is also expected to develop is the skill of reinforcement and praise of good behavior. It is important that when students do uh, what is expected 
and behave properly in class, uh, that they are, they are congratulated, they are reinforced, they are praised. This kind of behavior from the teacher improves academic uh, and behavioral performance by learners in class. They know that every time they do good, they are, uh, they are encouraged to continue doing it, and therefore uh, this inspires the class and improves the student's self-esteem. It also encourages the learners to repeat or to continue repeating this positive behavior, and eventually they are able to learn uh, what they are expected to cover in their lessons. At the same time, it is important, another skill that is important is that the teacher, a good teacher, is one who is able to use nonverbal communication properly and effectively during their teaching. Nonverbal communication is very important in, in teaching. These are the behaviors, these are the behaviors that accompany and complement the words that the teachers use while teaching. Now, when these words are complemented or are accompanied by appropriate actions and facial expressions or, or, or facial cues and also other kinds of uh, kinesics, other kinds of body movements, then it improves content delivery. The learners see the effect, see the importance of that kind of uh, content that is being uh, delivered by the teacher through the kind of actions that the teacher uh, accompanies the, the, the his kind or her kind of explanation. And therefore, this helps the students to focus. This helps the students to focus and process their lessons effectively. And therefore, uh, whatever that they see, they are even able to, to remember it for a longer time uh, than what, what the teacher was just saying through the use of words. Finally, it is always important as one of the skills of classroom management. It is always important for a teacher to use a variety of instructional skills, sorry, a variety of instructional resources and teaching aids when teaching. This helps to supplement and complement the teacher's teaching and it is also uh, important in simplifying the content for the learners so that it makes it, it easier for the learners to master the content and to understand it. It also helps in making learning uh, and teaching more interesting and also more enjoyable for both the teacher and the learner. At the same time, it also gives slow learners and students who struggle to process the content that is being taught opportunities to try uh, the educational technologies that are being adapted uh, so that they can, they can use them and adapt them according to their needs. It also offers both the learners and the teacher feedback uh, about their learning and their teaching and therefore helps the learners to solve their specific learning problems or to deal with mistakes that they might have committed during their, uh, their learning. Therefore, in conclusion, in conclusion, it is important that for the teacher to always have the relevant and to develop the relevant uh, classroom management skills. The success of every lesson will always depend to a large extent on how well the teacher manages and controls the class during his or her teaching. A teacher with good knowledge on, uh, in classroom management is more likely than not to always have a successful lesson during their teaching. Therefore, as teachers, let us try to practice these skills every time that we go to class and with time, management of the classroom will be very easy for us as we continue teaching because as we continue teaching we gain experience and, and continue uh, using that experience even to improve our content delivery and even to interact more with the learners. Therefore in conclusion, uh, as, 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 as a conclusion to, to the lesson, 
let us consider this question let us consider this question and the question is what are some of the characteristics what are some of the characteristics of a poorly managed learning environment what are some of the characteristics of a poorly managed learning environment and that marks the end of our lesson and next time we shall be learning about how to how to to to, to meet the needs of different learners with different learning needs and how to manage learners with different uh, learning styles or different learning styles so that you can be able to meet uh, each one at their point the points of their needs in terms of learning thank you for listening to me and that marks the end of the lesson today thank you so much these televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.